What's up, world? This is Rob with Live Loud coming at you guys again with another episode of Say It Loud. And again, guys, it's been so much fun to go and be able to connect with new people in the field of impact and working with them on telling their story who are out there on their mission, doing their craft, doing their mastery, and really paying it forward and passing it on to the people around them. There's some people that I have who are directly related to impact, but there's some people that I've come across who utilize a craft that's not necessarily designed for impact, and they get to utilize it in a way to go and inspire and create impact for others. So today, my guest is Hunter. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself about what stuff he's up to in this world and the story that got him here. So Hunter, thank you so much for joining me, man. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Errol. I'm really excited and uh, and I love what, what you're doing. I think it's super inspiring and, and uh, can really touch a lot of people. So it's an absolute pleasure for me to be here with you. Thank you, uh, thank you, man. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself with who you are and what you do. Yeah, um, my name is Hunter Gorski. I was born in New York, raised in New Jersey. Uh, currently find myself in San Antonio, Texas. I am a professional soccer player, as well as an entrepreneur. I have a couple of business ventures um, that I pursue while playing soccer. That's pretty much my life in a nutshell. I always say there's two things I'm most, you know, a couple of things I'm super grateful for. One is my family and friends. The other one is knowing what I love. A lot of people search a long time to find what it is they love, and I've been very fortunate to know what I love from an early age being one, soccer, and two, entrepreneurship and solving problems. Oh, that's amazing, man. When did you, when was the first time that you knew that you wanted to pursue soccer? Um, I, I couldn't even answer the question because it's as far back as I can remember. <laughs> um, my brother is a year and a half older than me and I always was just trying to do whatever he was doing. And he was playing soccer and so I was just competing with him playing soccer. He eventually started getting more serious, so I got more serious. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanna say it goes back to you know, four or five years old, I, I had a ball in my feet and I was, and I was playing and, and, and just competing against my brother. Oh, I love that, man. I, you know, it's funny because there's, there are so many people that find themselves with that question of what do I love? What do I really wanna pursue? And there's some people who feel that they might not know it, but, or they might know it without knowing it, right? Like they, they could have been something that they experienced from a young age that they might have disregarded as a possibility for a career path or, or an opportunity for them. For me, I my background is I studied industrial design and I knew when I was five years old, I wanted to be a designer. You know, at first it looked in the form of architect, but I used to play with GI Joes and I used to make houses to scale out of cardboard. I used to draw it out with the ruler. I used to score oh, the cardboard, make the stairs in proportion to like the height from the heel to the, to the kneecap. I, you know, I was five years old thinking like this, you know, just looking at it as like soccer is like, cool, this is what I love. This is one I want to pursue and it unfolding that way. Yeah, I think, I think the, the important thing is, is, is to be open, you know, and, and try things and play. We're here to play. We're here, you know, the only way you're going to find what you, what you love is you got to dabble. You got to, you got to try things and, 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 and see how you feel about it. See if you love it. Brother, that is so key right there. One of the ways that I, when I talk to people about exploring what they might want to do is go, go have fun, man. Go, go be curious about say, what yeah. it is. You know, we don't, we don't always, I, I wouldn't say maybe even rarely stumble up upon what we really love by this serious inquiry question is like, what do I want to really do? But in exploring and, and seeing yourself and putting yourself in these different situations where you get to exercise skills that you might not have known you had, that's when you start discovering and brewing something new, man. That's, that's really awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So uh, what is your business about, by the way? Um, I am the, I'm the exclusive distributor for Denmark's number one board game. Uh, it's called Partner. <laughs> and um, it's a really crazy story, which we can get into if you want. But somehow while I was playing soccer in Denmark, I came to acquire the rights to distribute this game in the United States and Canada. And that was about, I want to say, seven or eight months ago. You know, before I knew it, I had 500 games in my garage and I, you know, what <laughs> As a distributor of board games, which I had no experience being a distributor prior to, but um, you know, but but a lot of good ideas, and I've done, you know, I've been in sales positions and jobs and stuff like that. And um, the reason why it was so attractive to me is because I love. That's what I do when I'm home with my people. Like I'm very, I'm a big family guy. I'm always with family and friends, and we're always playing games together and having fun together. I love things that bring people together, and and that's what that opportunity represents to me—a chance to to give people the opportunity to come together, um, family, and have fun and compete, which is like what I'm all about. So it's a perfect little opportunity for me on the side. Cool, man. Yeah, you know what? The pictures all starting to come together with with 
the team aspect of the soccer player to the community aspect of family and coming together. And what is your story? What is that journey that led you to this point over the years? Aside from you taking the action as a football, uh, as a soccer player, but to also go in to create impact and to giving it back and to teaching and mentorship and guidance, where did this all brew from? Uh, that's a great question. Um, specifically with giving back. Yeah, my path, my path with soccer, I always knew I wanted to, to do something with soccer, um, which it, growing up in my house, it was, it was a non-negotiable that we had to do well in school. So like I never even contemplated like, not giving 110% in everything I do or in school to get the grades, um, to be able to go to a good college. Um, Cause at the end of the day, that was almost what was most important to my parents. And so I, I ended up, I ended up getting the opportunity to play soccer at Stanford University. I studied business and entrepreneurship there. It was about two, about three years in when my brother also played professional soccer. He was playing in Poland uh, at the time and he started studying neurolinguistic programming and some personality profiling. And I, again, I do everything my brother does. Most of the time we talk, we do everything together. We talk pretty much every single day. And so by, you know, by osmosis, whatever he gets into, I start getting into. And then once I started getting into that kind of material, neurolinguistic programming, personality profiling, a lot of self growth stuff, like there was just a lot that, um, that I thought I can, I can give back to youth players um, or to anybody really, like that, that maybe is struggling to find their way or get into action or you know, overcome some of their demons and understand themselves a little better, communicate a little better. Um, and so I'm, I'm grateful through my life. I had learned a lot of those lessons just because the game brought me so many places. I mean, as a kid, I was traveling to different countries. Professionally, I played in three different countries. I played in, I played in so many different states throughout America, so many different teams. I'm blessed when I look back at that opportunity because you, like, that's all just an opportunity to be able to communicate effectively with whoever, wherever, whenever on a very human level. Um, and so with that kind of experience and then getting a little bit of the, the other, you know, more book stuff and studying like that, it was just a great combination for me to give me the confidence that I can then go and impart that wisdom on somebody else who who's going through their journey. And that's amazing, man. So, I mean, I imagine having the fun aspect of soccer and being able to share that with your brother at a young age and that evolving into the journey of becoming to where you are and being able to achieve that. Uh, having a sound relationship with your family in the way that you guys love to come together, you love to come together with that. It's it's really refreshing, man, because a lot of times we hear, or a lot of times I hear when I work with people in their platform, it's very common that their creation came from hardship. Their creation came from a pain or a struggle. And not, not to say that you've been absent of that in your life, but it sounds like a lot of the motivation that you do what you do is because of the highlights of your life. and the the things that you were able to experience and now you have the opportunity that you embodied that that you could go and pass it on to the people who are molding their realities right now yeah you're 100 percent dead on i feel i feel i have a lot of gratitude for my family situation growing up the love that i was surrounded with by not only my my family but my friends and um you know probably had a lot of advantages in life in, in terms of having that kind of love. And it's like, I want to, I, I don't want to waste that. I want to capitalize that and do as much as I can with it and make as much impact as I can. Um, I will say that, you know, in terms of journey and making me who I am today throughout my soccer career, there have been loads of hardships. I mean, that, <laughs> I, was, I was kind of reading some of the questions that you had sent and it was like, you know, do you remember a moment that kind of shapes like, you know, who you are? And, and, and I really don't have one. It is a collection of many because, which is, which is pretty important to me. I, I talk about this thing called deep confidence, where it's just, you know, like unshakable, unwavering confidence that you can only get when you've been through so much, when you've been through so many tests where, where you have to deal with adversity. And, you know, it, it's in those moments of adversity that you find out who you really are. You prove it to yourself, right? Like you can't fake that how quick you respond to something that's a negative and turn it into a positive, how quickly you get, how quickly you get into action after, you know, something doesn't go your way. Mm -hmm. Proves to yourself how much you can handle. And so um, there's definitely moments throughout my career. I could think of at least four or five that were major inflection points that um, shaped 
who I who I am today and who I will be moving forward. In my youth, there were every year you can you, you try and climb up the ranks. It was called ODP to get to the national rank, and there's like seven or eight tiers before you get up there. And literally every single year, I would make one tier, get cut at the next one, make another tier, get cut at the next one, make, and then I'd be like, okay, I'm just gonna come back and work harder, make the next one, get cut at the next one. Um, and that kind of um, relationship with rejection early on, and just being told, no, you're not good enough. What are you gonna do about it? Started to build, you know, the spine that I would need to deal with things later on in my career. So. Um, eventually first major inflection point post, like being a young, a young player was when I was in Stanford university. Um, you know, to get to that level, you generally have to be one of the best players, like in your age group or whatever it is before you get to college. And once you get to college, it's like, all right, now you're, you're playing with guys that are older, faster, stronger than you, a little bit smarter and wiser. And it was in my second, my second year, I started every game my first year. I thought I was on top of the world. I was, you know, I was the man. I was like, okay, I'm definitely gonna try and go pro. Everything's going great. The team was doing well. And then the second game of the season in my second year, I, I, I lost my spot and was on the bench. And it was in that moment where it was like, okay, how am I gonna respond to this situation? You no longer have your parents or your friends around you. I'm off on my own 3000 miles away from home. Um, you know, with, with basically, you know, just not strangers, but guys that don't know you deep to your core. And, um, and it was in that moment that I just decided, okay, you know what, I'm just gonna, I, I'm, I'm, I already thought I was the hardest working guy. I'm gonna work 10 times harder. I'm gonna work 10 times smarter. I'm gonna be out here twice a day, three times a day. And the reason I share that story as an inflection point is because I went, I struck every, all, all season long, it was a struggle to get back on the field and fight for a position. I ended up fighting for, you know, getting in at center mid instead of right back, which was my position. Anyway, at the end of the season, the team and the coach has not nominated me to be captain in my sophomore year. So it was just like, I went from being a guy who didn't serve a role and was on the bench to being the captain of the team, all because of how I chose to respond in that moment. I didn't feel sorry for myself. I didn't take time to get on with it. It was just like, oh, I'm gonna work harder. And it's, it, and it's, I like to tell that to the young players because everyone around me at the time saw how I reacted to such a difficult situation. And in that they saw something special and everybody, when you have those moments, you have to look at it as an opportunity to prove that to the people around you and to yourself. Um, and so that's, you know, that was the first big one in college. I'll, I'll just give a second inflection point, which was when I was in, um, I had gone on trial. I don't know for anybody not in the, in the professional sports world. When you go on trial, it's like a test somewhere. And it's like, nothing is guaranteed. You never know what happens when you go on trial. And I had gone to Israel through a, an agent's agent. And they had, you know, they had said, listen, we just want to take a look at you. The, the terms of the contract, they said, this is how much you're going to make. This is, you know, you'll have a house, you'll have a car, blah, blah, blah. I got there. I killed it on the trial. I called the agent. I was like, listen, I want you to go. I want you to call them. They're going to want to do a deal. He's like, ah, I don't know. I was like, listen, tell them I'll go meet with the owner myself. <laughs> so, and these guys are not, these are like, yeah. I don't know. You don't know what they do on the side. Like they, they're not normal guys. All right. And they're shrewd businessmen, tough negotiators. And so I go and meet with this guy one-on-one -on -one, and he's like, listen, we like you, blah, 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 blah. And he takes out a piece of paper out of his, like, he rips a piece of paper and he like writes the terms of the contract on the piece of paper and slides it to me. And he's like, this is, <laughs> and I'm in the middle of Israel. You know, the guy barely speaks English. The coaches are waiting in the other room. And you know, I had been in situations like this before. So I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, I have another opportunity in Denmark. I came all this way. I scratched out his numbers and I wrote my numbers on the thing. I slide it back to him. And we do this three or four times before he eventually has respect for my kind of confidence and my willingness to, you know, to play with him, to negotiate with him. And so we, we agree on something and he goes, can I shake your hand? I said, no problem. He said, bring the paperwork in tomorrow. We'll sign the contract. We'll move forward. I said, okay, great. I walk in the next morning. I called, I had another trial lined up in Denmark. I walk in the next morning with the papers. Hey, how you doing here? The papers are like, sorry, we signed a different guy this morning. When can you be out of the apartment? And in that moment, it was like sucker punch, like another one of those moments that was like, whoa, you know, because it, it, it was so close. It tasted so close. Like Tel Aviv is an unbelievable place to live. It was going to be a rich life experience. Like everything was great. I already, you know, told the other opportunity I wasn't coming. So it was like I went from having everything to having nothing in a moment.
And it was like the life was taken out of me. And it was another one of those moments that I definitely look back at and I'm like, all right, well, how quick am I going to respond to this? How long am I going to give myself to, you know, obviously you're disappointed. We're humans, you know? So I was disappointed. You're sad. You're whatever. And it was like, well, I, I maybe I gave myself 30 minutes to an hour to feel bad for myself. And then it was right back on the phone, get to Denmark, go on trial and let's grind again. Yeah. Um, so that was another moment where I kind of proved to myself that, you know, nothing, nothing will stop me kind of thing. Brother, there's, there's, there's so many parts of that that I'm, I'm probably going to miss a couple of things that I really want to highlight, but even saying the 30 minutes to an hour to feel sorry for yourself and then get back in action is like one, that's such an important part of this too, right? To not negate that we're human, that we have our emotions in, tied into this. So to give ourselves permission to kind of be there, feel what comes up and then get back in alignment with the actions of what is my mission at the end of the day? Another thing that really stands out to me is your level of conviction and your commitment. Uh, a lot of times when people are pursuing something, especially if that, that something is in question, like you knew you wanted to do this, for the, but for some people who might be listening who are not positive, but they want to explore this, they will take a rejection. They will take failure in the moment or it didn't turn out the way I was attached to it turning out. Those moments might come, but is how you respond to it is how you choose to interact. Okay, now this is the current situation, what do I choose to do from here? And that is such a make or break point of it, right? Because we could be victimized of all the things that didn't go our way as a participant in our life, but to really be a generated in our life is to, to look at that as we go through the highs and lows, knowing that they're, they're gonna be, they're gonna come, have been willing that they're going to come. And then when they do come, whether it's a high or a low, how do you choose to respond in that moment to, to really go and interact with it? Yeah, two things that 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 make that that I think about when you say that, which is one, you know, your why, your north star. It was like, you know, the conviction. It was like, you know, I'm gonna get, uh, you know, to the national team or whatever it was. Like, no matter what, just making that decision, the no matter what decision, mm -hmm. gives you the conviction at these at these different inflection points and these obstacles to be like, it eh, doesn't matter. It's just another 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 learning experience for me. You know, there is no failure. It's just like I'm getting here. Whatever's on the way there is just a learning experience for me. So that's number one is having that North star. And then the second one is having that, that thing that, that is driving you to, that's giving you the fire towards that, whether it's, you know, proving somebody wrong or whether it's, um, you know, everybody has a different thing that's going to light the fire under their, under their belly when, when they hit these, you know, they hit these obstacles, but that it made me think of those two things. And the third thing I wanted to say was, um, I don't want to, I don't want to miss giving credit in those moments where 30 minutes to an hour where I'm feeling sorry for myself, the people around me, I'm a big people guy that we need to do everything we want to do. And you could, you, you, you could bet your bottom dollar that in those moments, I'm calling my people, I'm calling my brother, I'm calling my mom and that, you know, they help, they help guide you on that path as well. Uh, and make sure you're still pointed in that direction. They give you the support you need at that time which is why this is a separate thing, but I always say support, you know, surround yourself with your tens. You got to surround yourself with your tent and uh, they're going to help you in those moments. Yeah. You know, and, and another thing with surrounding yourself around your tens is people who also believe in, in what you're chasing, not necessarily just for the love that they have for you, but the idea or the vision that you have for yourself and really to align by that. I mean, I, I know there are times there, there, I would say there are few people in my corner that really are vouching for me to succeed in creating my mission and my impact. There's a lot of people who might be along for the ride, that a lot of people might be like, enjoy the highs of it, but for the few people that actually can like really be able to back me and hold me to my highest self, not just comfort me when, if I want to run home, but to hold me in what I believe is my truth, my truth, my integrity and my, my vision of that. Which is, which, which is earned which is earned in my opinion. Like, you know, if, if anybody's listening to this, it's like, you got to earn that though. You know, you have to be doing the things you're doing right now, the hustling, the grinding, the making the calls, the staying up late, the like, you know, chipping away at it every single day. Mm -hmm. Whoever's surrounding you, they're going to see that. And that's why they're, that's also why they're buying in because they love you, but also because they know that you're working for it and you're, and you're, you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, there's another thing that I really want to highlight in this, in this journey that, what I see the common denominator in all those situations is that you exercise how you chose to react regardless of what was coming up in front of you because of your North Star, your alignment, and your commitment of what you were up to. So for the people listening, hardship, struggle, triumph, 
all of that in the mix every single time you exercise that you come up with a new tool so who you were walking into your freshman year was probably not necessarily who you were when you were going back and forth negotiating that that came with discipline and, and exercising that self that self in your in your practice that you were able to elevate to that level and continue to elevate to everything that you're doing now yeah 100 percent. also i just to uh piggyback on that if you probably i've had fun the whole time too like <laughs> it really is a journey to me if you ask like all my teammates or you know all, all the people you know in in my life you they'll tell they'll be the first one to tell you i always i almost always have a smile on my face super positive like even in those tough moments it's like you know I, I you kind of you learn to get excited about it because you know that there's growth on the other side of it and uh it's at the end of the day i'm sure you can look back on on where you've been and you could you could honestly say like it's all about the journey it's not about getting to the actual place you know pete this I'm, this isn't original nothing i say is really original to me um you know i, I think it really is about uh, about the journey and the relationships yeah i mean one of the reasons why and it's such an honor to have you on man is because you continue to practice it and you know it's is these moments that really make that that so rich that destination wherever i end up being so rich is because of what i chose to embody right now uh, which is really fantastic man so uh, again so i know you work with with the youth i know you're working with people in the mentorship and being able to pass this on for the people who are listening one of the reasons why i have to say it loud is for anyone who might relate to this it might be uh, an aspiring athlete to an athlete to someone who's going through hardship or someone who's on a high right now going through a, a serious climb uh, what would be your words that you would say to those people who are trying to find themselves in this moment on exercising that? Oh man, trying to find, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we said before, I think once you find, you know, once you have that, that, that thing that, that you're working towards stuff becomes a little bit easier, but, um, I'm a big, I'm a big believer of getting into action. Um, and and you know a lot of self a lot of self growth one of the one of the things that i i kind of talk about the most as an athlete is that you know as a professional athlete we're done with our day usually around 12 30 one o'clock which means like in my opinion you know that we got six seven hours to do something else mm -hmm. like let's maximize you know we're here we're here once like let's get into action and do stuff and become our best self and really engage in that whether it's whether it's reading and filling your mind with really positive good thoughts i mean i can't advocate enough how important reading is and how much it changed you know how much it changed my life um because it's like you have you could cut 10 years off of your learning curve for whatever it is that you want to do you can get inspired by people who took time to read you know to, to live a life that had some challenges that you're going to face in your life and and um it really, it really puts rocket fuel in where you want to go to be able to read those stories and be inspired by them. So, um, so I would say, you know, reading, like I always try and give the youth like action items to do right away. It's like, pick up a book and read 10 pages a day. Don't make it too crazy. Don't make it too ridiculous where you're not going to be, able, you know, you're going to get stuck in inaction because it's too much. Read five or 10 pages a day. Mm -hmm. The second thing I always say is get yourself an accountability partner, get yourself because that is crucial to, to getting change going outside of just yourself. For example, I don't know if you're familiar with Marco Polo. Mm -hmm. It's, it's you, you, you are, it's a video sharing app. It's a video sharing app. Me, my brother, Jason, and pretty much my other brother, his name's Austin Meyer. We're on, we're on, um, we're on Marco Polo. We do a call every single month. We know what each other's objectives are. We know what to hold each other accountable to. And we're not scared to tell each other when we're slacking. And we're also not scared to celebrate each other. We do a lot of that. And, and it really, is an unbelievable that's one of the biggest action items i get people is get yourself two accountability partners and, and go on your journey with them because it's going to make it so much more fun it's going to it's going to force you to take actions at times when you know you should be taking action but you're not and it just it's it's going to maximize everything you want to do so um so those are those are some of the action items i do is like grab your accountability partners start reading a book and just keep playing you know keep playing keep trying things keep playing until you find what it is that you're passionate about I love that. Yeah, and I, I could vouch for that, man. I do these like masterminds, or I used to do them more consistently before, uh, but we would mastermind. I, we call them heart storming because we hear brainstorming, but let's get aligned with the heart. Let's, what, what do we really want to create here? What is it, our level of success that we really want to evoke? And how does that manifest into reality? And so coming together with a community of people who not just necessarily think alike or something, but just have attributes that 
can really support and propel you forward towards what you want to create, to have the, the, the work ethic or the creativity or the level of fun that they want to interject it and make in light of the journey. Uh, having these people in your corner and you and theirs is so crucial that we could be elevating and learning together. Uh, definitely hacking, reading, learning from people who have been on that journey before, you know, and, and just partnering up with, with uh, just masterful minds. Again, this is another reason why I love Say It Loud is because I get to hear about these things and I get food of uh, food for thought, you know, having a conversation with you and being like, okay, cool. So what is my, my accountability partnerships or, or crew going to look like? Uh, so that's really solid, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for that. Where can people follow your work or stay tuned to in checking you out? Um, well, I'm playing for San Antonio FC right now. They can follow on Instagram. My Instagram is hgorski. Um, Partners Board Game is the, the Instagram is Partners Game, or they can get the game if they want at www.partnersboardgame.com. Pretty easy. Um, my brother has been trying to get me to make more TikTok videos, so once that happens, I'll give you, I'll give you five. But mostly, I'm on you know mostly I'm on Instagram. Uh, yeah, that's that that would be the best place to find me. Okay, great, man. All right, guys. So everyone tuning in. Again, aside from just athleticism of sports, uh, but it's also about like the mentorship, that growth. Uh, a person like you, I know, is far from done. Uh, you and your brother, you know, you guys are going to keep on putting your your heads together and to see how you can keep on distributing this information for those of us in quarantine who want a game. Heck yeah, go support another person who's actually creating something out in the world and buy that game. I'm curious to see what it's about. Uh, and again, Hunter, thank you so much for for telling us your story and joining on. Uh, it's really a pr uh, privilege and pleasure to be able to go and sit here with you and, and have these conversations. Thank you so much for having me. Your questions are awesome, giving me <laughs> to reflect on once I once I get off uh, once I get off this call. So I appreciate that from you. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. All right, guys. So for everyone tuning in, stay tuned to more episodes of Say It Loud, where we get to hear from more inspirational, inspiring, just powerful people who are creating some awesome stuff for the community around them, who are doing the work themselves, uh, who share their stories of the ups and downs and to celebrate where we are at. So stay tuned to more love coming soon. Peace. Thank you.